Obviously, you all taking time off from your families to come over here, and I really, really appreciate that. But as we've done before, because most of you have been with us in the last uh, uh, committee, and I'm just very, very glad that because we need, I believe, the help. We need, and I've been working over the last uh, six, seven months now, there is so much of the participation of people who understand what it's all about. So, I have asked you to join us and I will put before you a very small presentation and then we will break away into groups and I think that would be important for us to discuss those issues, come back later on in the afternoon with some kind of working plan. So here is the vision statement. This is what we would like Rajasthan to be. A happy, healthy, educated, gender sensitive, prosperous, well developed state. Which Chief Minister would want that? Shall we go to the next? Our approach, and right at the top I put, is the happiness index. These are the three pillars on either side. The three pillars are of uh, infrastructure on one side. Next please. Some issues which I'd like to flag, which are the areas of concern of Rajasthan, mostly at the seas. Then of course there are gender disparities that even after 67 years of independence, this, uh, the, the gender disparities are extremely stark, as you can see. In most of the human development indices, we are ranked below the national average and compared poorly with top ranking states. We need to be able to change this situation. Next, please. We are looking out for economic well being, but to catch up, economic and social indicators here refer to the fact that the state is actually performing much, much below its potential. And we need to catch up. We need to catch up fast with the rest of the country. For that, we need to grow at a higher rate than the national average. The poor economic infrastructure is caused by and it is also a cause of poor development. Next, please. If we look at the level of infrastructure, we try to target it, the 12th island plan of the state, and this is just 7.7% growth. But we believe this is not sufficient for the prosperity of all. What we need is to target it at 12 percent annual growth. We have to make manufacturing and the tourism sector the engines of growth in the state. And we have a huge potential and a very natural advantage in this area. Thanks, please. More areas of concern. If you look at water. There are a total number of 243 blocks in the, in the state. You need to see that because Rajasthan is India's most water scarce state, we have 10% of the country but only 1% of water. The extraction is hugely critical as you can see, 243 blocks, 172, where the extraction is more than the recharge and the others 44 blocks where the extraction is between 70 to 100 percent of the recharge and two blocks completely saline. The frequency of the water supply in the urban areas is also an area of concern. Please go back. There's also an area of concern if you look. Um, there are 132 towns out of the state's 222 towns which are receiving water once in 24 hours and the rest are receiving water at intervals of more than 24 hours. Next please. The rural water supply is no better. Out of a lack of 21,133 habitations, only 69,000 are fully covered and 28,000 are partially covered. The state is also having the additional issue of fluoride and salinity. These really have to be attended to because more and more blocks and more and more water is tending to go this way. 23,841 habitations are quality affected 
6,000, almost 7,000 are fluoride affected and 15,500 are affected by salinity. So here's what we are what we are going to try to do with this, we are working on just now. The first one is uh, a new concept. It's the four quarters concept of a gentleman by the name of Mr. Hanuman Rao, who worked very, very uh, well in Andhra Pradesh, and uh, they had considerable success over there. So we are doing a pilot project with them on what is called the four water concept. This is to using rainwater, surface water, groundwater, and soil moisture. Basically, trying to harness rainwater to improve the surface water flow and storage so that we can recharge groundwater. Also, linking the basins together within Rajasthan itself so that we can transfer the water from the surplus to the deficit basins. Basically, we are also trying to work for a surface water grid for the drinking water which will overlay this. Go next to energy. Now, in the distribution sector, it would be almost impossible to imagine a worse situation. In the last five years, the accumulated losses have gone to the roof. And we are suffering a debt of something like 75,000 crores which has gone up from 15,000 crores. Why are transmission charges in Gujarat lower than Rajasthan, even though Gujarat's handling capacity is twice that of Rajasthan's? TND losses are still a matter of concern. I mean, we are looking at something like 30% at present, and we are suffering from a shortage of fuel for our power plants. Now looking at uh, development of solar parks, the western part of the states actually enjoy the highest number of cloud-free days in the country. The incoming solar radiation is comparable to the deserts of Africa, Middle East and North America. So for us this could be a game changer. And our aim is to go to 25,000 megawatts as far as solar power generation is concerned. We are looking at solar farms. We are intending to encourage rooftop solar power generation and infrastructure support for evacuation of power using green energy transmission grids. Bringing in PPP and distribution franchise models in distribution. And we are wanting to aim at adding another 6,500 years. Um, the electricity. But we need to bring in technological interventions in terms of things like cables and tamper proof transmitters and that kind of thing, um, which will have to be done side by side quickly. 40,000 new connections, 4 lakh household connections in rural areas every year. And to achieve a financial turnaround, really very strict monitoring of the financial recovery plan. Public private partnership in all those assets. That is generation, transmission and distribution is what we are encouraging. We have a total network of over 195,000 kilometers as of March 2014 and a road density per lap population of 285 kilometers. The village connectivity in the state, based on the census of 2001, for village populations above 250 is 94% and for population below 250 is 34%. The connectivity of population 500 and above based on the census of 2001 is almost 100%. And most of the villages have been connected under the PMGSY. So, Pradhan Nathi Gram Next. Um, the state government We've taken up a very, very ambitious program for the development of something like 20,000 kilometers of highway during the next five years. The development of these 20,000 kilometers have been targeted to be taken up on a PPP mode. The investment of 70,000 crores has been estimated with a, with a contribution of 20,000 crores from the state government 
up to 20% in the form of each year from the government of India and the remaining from the private part of During 2003-8, we developed the North-South Corridor, which was about just a little over 1,000 kilometers. And this time, to complement this earlier mega highway structure, we are planning to develop the East-West Corridor of 2,000 kilometers with an estimated cost of some 5,000 dollars. Now, here, for maintenance of something like 1 lakh kilometers of the remaining road length, we are using uh, something called the output and performance based road contracts. In the budget of 2014-15, we have announced the development of Grameen border paths, which are going to cost about 1800 crores, um, small roads with drainages in 9177 panchayats, and uh, in the next three years. We believe this is very important because the villagers also have to be given that kind of uh, impetus. And while we do these roads in cities, there is always become there's always this difference between the city and the village. It's so very important that we do something like this to allow them to feel that they are part of what we are doing. In 2014 and 15, we have announced the development of these plus the work on the road safety action plan, which has also been started. We believe this is also very important for the state. And we go to the urban development sector. The housing area is one of very major concern for us in the urban area. Our uh, estimated shortage of houses till 2017 is about 10 lakhs. The state therefore needs a self-propelling policy to encourage construction of what uh, the EWSs and the energy houses, as also the low-cost MIG houses in all the other bodies. Then solid waste disposal in the big cities is a huge challenge. So far, we do not have any successful case of waste to energy in the state. Along with solid waste disposal, there are challenges in the treatment of sewage and utilization of treated water in major cities. The challenges of creation of the sewage network or grid system and even now, we are not fully covered in the state on this. And of course, there is this parking, and, which is a huge problem, and mass transport, where we believe there is insufficient space and maybe not so good an infrastructure. The state government is proposing to bring up the following new legislations. Apart from these four, that's come down like the urban, urban uh, apartment ownership bill, the urban land certification type bill, heritage conservation, general unified metropolitan authority bill. We have other problems too. Slums in the major cities, no uh, proper development in the past few years. The slum development policy has remained by a large non starter. So we really, that's another area that we really need to look at. Provision of clean drinking water and sanitation is lacking in most cities. Apart from solid waste management, there are other areas which need attention. And these are management and disposal of plastic waste, disposal of biodegradable waste, and recycling of untreated waste water and industrial waste water. There is a need for human resource development in local bodies to face these challenges in an effective manner. And I don't think we have that kind of manpower. We need to be able to get more. We really have no expertise we're looking to you for ideas to take us further. Now, uh, industries. Uh, every new investment really requires skilled manpower. And the existing manpower needs training from time to time because of the change in technology. As is a lack of appropriate technology, we need to bring, uh, reach this to all manufacturers. Water is a hugely limited factor and we are looking at, we are forced to look at actually less water intensive industries. Power is an essential prerequisite and if our plans fall into place, adequate power will not be a problem in time to come. Um, next please. 
I'm adding to this the daily sector. Um, Rajasthan has the largest livestock population in the country. It also supplements the income of farming communities in the rural area. And so we have considered it also as a first area. But the above is only indicative what you see there. We would welcome ideas um, and how to go about this. I'd like to flag here the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. This is going to be another game changer for Rajasthan because as per the duly approved alignment, nearly 39% of the area of this corridor falls within Rajasthan. Then, we have something called Startup Oasis. It is an incubation center to promote entrepreneurship. It's been done jointly by Rico and the Center for Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship Initiatives. Um, they have taken up this in approximately 18 startup companies, new companies. And uh, Rico has provided the infrastructure support as well as financial uh, assistance. The financial assistance to this center is coming uh, from IIM uh, and Dabad uh, and Rico. IIM is also doing a hand holding for um, these industries. We go to tourism. Um, it's all there. As you know, everyone knows Rajasthan is one of the premier states as far as tourism is concerned. So I don't have to flag all the issues with you. But even though we have managed basic tourism infrastructure facilities and most of the tourist places, we still lack world-class amenities and major sites, and that of course is the most important thing. Because it goes out by word of mouth. If you cannot be connected by uh, properly by, by air, first of all we lose a huge uh, advantage. And I think I can't believe that we are actually not properly connected. Then of course there will be uh, competition from other states who also understood that tourism is good for them. And therefore an aggressive marketing strategy is required. You will be surprised, next, you will be surprised to see that three major cities in the state, the Jaipur, Jodhpur and Udaipur, are not connected by air. They used to be connected by air five years ago, but in the last five years, there are no flights. So if anyone is wanting to reach any of these, from Bombay, uh, you can go there, from Delhi, maybe you can go there, but you can't go travel within the state, which is really strange. We're also um, introducing new events like the Holy Festival at Teague and Bharatpur, the Bhakti Festival at Kushkar and where um, want to revive celebrations like Rajasthan Day, which have really taken off and done well, um, but got cancelled in the last five years. And also the music in the park, which is very popular, and uh, want to bring that back, and the international celebrations. Alongside all of this, we want to pick up five or eight villages that would like to show these that crafts who could be embroidery or pottery or any one of these things. We would want to pick them up, put them onto the circuit as part of village tourism and showcase their special skills. I think this is important, even if we manage to do four or five in the beginning, I believe that it would take off. I would also want to provide staying accommodations within those villages, so encourage uh, what they call homestays as we do in the urban areas. It could also be encouraged the same way in the rural areas. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at education. Um, for any state to progress, quality education has to be a given. And uh, this area, the government institution, has always been an area of big concern to all of us. If you look at the I think that, you know, we put this in the teacher schools, but when we look at, uh, there are, we even have something called zero children's schools. Just how do you forget how do you survive? How do you have a single, I mean, a zero children's school? 142 of them. Um, with teachers and everything else for children. So, I mean, it's really, really an area of concern for all of us. The next please. You see, uh, the, the fourth point.
way to the school agenda, taking people, uh, taking education to the people or vice versa. Any um, children living away from, let's say, two to five kilometers away from the schools, we thought of providing them transport vouchers so that they can either come together and uh, organize the transport for themselves, um, or they can get onto a bus or join others to go to the school. But that should not be a reason for why they don't go to school. But here, we need to add so much more value, and I believe that in that sense, the discussions on this particular agenda item would be very useful to us. Next, please. Livelihood status, uh, by the way, is one of the most important things for us because there is an anger among the people because of unemployment and that is not just the state of Rajasthan, it's happening everywhere. It's happening across the country and everyone's understood this. I'm happy to say that we were the ones who actually brought uh, skill development, Rajasthan Mission on Livelihood was the first thing that we came up with in the 2003-2003 period. And we were happy to see that it got picked up by at the national level, under this national skill development mission, which is a, was a good thing and progress. We, of course, have also done good work in this area. Um, the demographic dividend of having 34% of the population in the age group of 80, 18 to 39. This is offset by very low levels of skill, 5%. So why are we saying that we want to encourage investment to come in? We want actually also to develop skill-wise and education-wise, our kids, so that they are able to stand on their own feet and when you set up your industry, they don't have to, I mean, you don't have to go and look for people outside. We would like to have them ready and waiting to be assimilated in those investments that get set up in the state. The elasticity of job creation in the manufacturing sector has actually gone negative. It is growing at 6.8% in the initial years of the level plan, but declined to minus 0.76% last year. Simultaneously, the contribution of manufacturing to overall job creation has also gone down drastically. This is indicative of capital intensity, mainly due to adverse labor laws, and also due to skill deficit in the, in the country. To revive all this, we have actually gone to uh, labor laws reform so that there is an ease of doing business and that it can be enhanced. So, ITIs have long been neglected by us, so this is an area of, um, we, we think we need to strengthen. The skill base has to be made strong and relevant. We need more game changers, collaborators, and go-getters in the skill area. And so this is an area also that needs to be worked upon. Um, ITI don't teach angry, angry skills. Krishi Vigyan Kendras that are set up in most states are very limited in scope and do not have a great delivery system. So what we're saying is, is industry training centers are creating skills for industry. Why not agriculture training centers? It's a thought. Has anyone any ideas on that one? Can you think about this? Not only just agriculture, also allied activities and go with this. Next please. Um, what is crucial here is employability. And, and you know, everything can come, but if you don't have this, the youth all know this. And they require an enabling hand-holding network rather than handouts. We saw that in the last election. I mean, the government did its best by handing out all kinds of goods to people, but they didn't even draw into it. They, and it was a very interesting thing when I was on tour, uh, Facebook, uh, there was an entry in the Facebook thing, I actually took it out and checked it. Somebody somewhere in their own district, you know, uh, free electricity, free wheat, free cycles, free everything. All they don't give us is jobs. We don't want anything else. We just provide us jobs. Create a, an enabling situation. We would rather stand on our own feet. And I'm so proud of this person, whoever it was. It's 
some part of Rajasthan, I'm just so proud of it. There were people who were thinking and understanding that here was a government trying its damnedest to buy their vote. And they actually were not looking out for it. And they were saying it on the Facebook. I thought that was fantastic. Welcome to you all. The fact that you pioneered.